morning represents the start of the Christmas season. Uh, you know, this is a bit of a first for me. I've, I've done quite a few talks on Advent over the years, uh, but um, for, I, I actually ban my kids from playing Christmas songs and doing anything Christmassy until the 1st of December. So I'm kind of breaking my own rule uh, this morning by starting to talk about Christmas on the 29th of November. So uh, forgive me uh, if some of you um, are like me and um, are a bit disturbed by that, but hey ho. So I, I, I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning uh, and I'm going to need your help. You know, I'm conscious we all sit on Zoom in our lovely comfortable armchairs and we listen to whoever's rabbiting on on the screen lately all about the vision and um, and we all just sit there, we drink, I see you all drinking coffee and having a really nice cosy time. Time for some interaction, people. So one of the uh, tools that I've been using in my work with the young people is uh, a thing called Menti, menti.com. So I'm just gonna share my screen. I need you to go to, in using, using your devices, I need you to go to menti.com. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. You'll be asked for a code. There's the code on the screen, 97088583. And all you need to do is describe in a single word what Christmas means to you. Here we go. Thank you, people. You're engaging. Jesus, that's a good one. Family, Emmanuel, Christian dinner, Christian dinner. Lots of words coming up. Stress. <laughs> like that one, presence, joy, celebration, all sorts of words coming up here. Thank you for this. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Give it a few more seconds. 19 of you have engaged. That's great. 20 people. Fellowship. Hope is in there. Yes, sprouts. I like that. Sprouts. That's a good one. Happy. Thank you. For, thank you, guys. Carols around the fire. Time off. Yeah, that's a good one. Hope is in there. Very good. Lots, lots of words. Okay, I'm going to just uh, stop that for a moment. Thank you guys for that. Really appreciate your input there. That's been really helpful. And um, you're all you're all very lovely spiritual people and um, all the usual words that I was expecting for Christmas. One of you was a little bit honest and used the word stress because I was going to say not many of you, I'm not seeing many words like stress and hassle and skint, um, but somebody did somebody did put the word stress because Christmas can be a bit like that can't it at times and in amongst all of the wonderful uh, message of Christmas it can actually mean stress and hassle and being skint as well so today is the start of start of Advent a message of hope and here I am delivering another talk a, a series of talks on the subject of Advent uh, but you know Christmas we found out this past week is going to be very different and somewhat restrictive to what we are normally used to. I've been spending a lot of time in these last couple of days communicating with my brothers on how on earth we're going to look after my dad who's alone over Christmas and how we're going to do that. And it's, it's even amongst, even though they've relaxed it slightly, it's still very restrictive. Um, we, we face a season of the unknown in these times. Uh, and this year, 2020, of, of having to be separated from family and friends, um, you know, it has and continues to take its toll. For many, the, the prospect of facing Christmas alone or, or with in restrictions imposed upon them, apart from loved ones, is an unbearable thought and fills minds and souls with hopelessness and some of you might be quietly thinking here we go another talk on advent and you might be thinking to yourself or saying to me quietly without me hearing just in case you hadn't noticed rog there's quite a lot of doom and gloom around right now there isn't really a lot of hope in the world so if advent is a message of hope then what is the point of it especially this year with the 
hopelessness of the times we're living through right now. So this morning, I just very quickly, very, very quickly just want to try and unpack the answer to that question. What is the point of Advent? So come with me, if you will, to where it all started in the book of Genesis and chapter 1, verse 27. It says this, so God created human beings in his own image. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And verse 31 says this, then God looked over all that he had made and he saw that it was good. He saw that it was very good. Now, contrast that, if you will, with chapter 6, verses 5 to 6, only a few short chapters later. It says this, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and he put them on the earth. It broke his heart. Something dreadful and drastic had happened. Humankind had become sinful. If the story could have stopped at the end of chapter two, Genesis chapter two, as God intended, then all would be well. And there indeed would have been no need for Advent. A scorpion, being a very poor swimmer, asked a turtle to carry him on his back across the river. Are you mad? exclaimed the turtle. You'll sting me while I'm swimming and I'll drown. My dear turtle, laughed the scorpion. If I were to sting you, you would drown and I'd go down with you. Now, where is the logic in that? You're right, cried the turtle. Hop on. The scorpion climbed aboard, but halfway across the river, he gave the turtle a mighty sting. As they both sank to the bottom, the turtle said, do you mind if I ask you something? You said there is no logic in your stinging me. Why did you do it? Oh, it has nothing to do with logic, the drowning scorpion replied. It's just my nature. Humankind, humankind are sinful by nature. And as we navigate our way through the Old Testament, we see stories of struggle, of hardship, of redemption, of pain, of victory for God's chosen people. And eventually we reach the time between the end of the Old Testament and the start of the New Testament for a 400 year period after the closing of the Old Testament, God was silent. Advent begins in darkness, a time of silence where God revealed nothing new to his people. God revealed nothing new to his people. Imagine how the Jews who were God's chosen people must have felt when they saw various world powers come and go and and as they faced various hardships and struggles living under these ever-changing world superpowers where are you god where are you god why did you speak through the prophets such as micah when he said this but you bethlehem though you are small among the clans of judah out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Prophets such as Jeremiah, who said this, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. Prophets such as Isaiah, for unto us a child is born, 
to us a son is given, he said, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Why, God? Why do generations come and go, but none have seen the fulfillment of these prophecies? Is the reality that actually none of it's true? Were you just playing with us, God? Where are you, God? And maybe some of us are asking that same question in this season of COVID that we find ourselves in. Where are you, God? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you, God? And then this happens, Tracy. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Thank you. So lighting up the sky over the fields near Bethlehem, the beginning of the new covenant, the promised Messiah, the saviour of the world was here. The saviour of the world was here. The one who John the Baptist declared, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us us and that that may i suggest to you is the point of advent the god who had always been and who right the way through the old testament had demonstrated his power and his love and his compassion and his mercy but actually to most people remained very aloof and apart he was with us god with us with real flesh and real blood suddenly there was hope for the jews suddenly there was hope for the jews but not only the jews the whole world for all generations including me and you living through a, a pandemic with all of the pressures and anxiety that that represents is tough really tough but there is hope people there's real hope god chose to come into this world of pain, of hate, of political confusion, of corruption. He chose to come into this world of COVID as Emmanuel, God with us. So through this Advent season, over the next couple of weeks, as we unpack the truths of, of why God came and what that means to us here in 2020 in a world dominated by COVID. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit reignites hope in your spirits and would once again rekindle our amazement and our wonder that God would step down from heaven and make his home here on earth. I pray that he gives you a new assurance and an excitement of what it means to be a follower of Christ. And for those of you who may not yet be a follower of Christ, I pray that God would open your eyes and allow you to see and understand that there really is hope available for you in 2020 and beyond because of Advent. God bless you.